Good evening. Welcome to Los Angeles First Filipino Church of the Nazarene. Hi. <laughs> this will be our last night. Please join our church every Sunday and um, follow us sa Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Uh, 9 a.m. sa Wiley Chapel, 3401 West 3rd Street, Los Angeles, California. So, join po kayo sa amin. Masaya po doon. Nako. Ito po ang uh, ating my journey of a lifetime. Ito po ang ating uh, 52 weeks no? or 52 meetings. At ito ay uh, to ensure Everyone reads the entire Bible in a year. Ito po'y pinopromote namin sa simbahan bilang isa sa baga basic foundation ng ating paglago sa Christianity. Kaya gumawa po tayo ng program every Wednesday night ang Walk Through the Bible. At pag natapos po, as promised, eh, from Episode 1 hanggang episode 52 ay 52 nights from January 1st. No, from New Year's Day hanggang uh, President's Day. 52 nights yan. Sunod-sunod. Pwede nyo pong subaybayan at uh, matuto po tayong lahat sabay-sabaw. <laughs> Ito po. Akalain nyo, ha? parang napakasaya ko ngayong gabi kasi at last natapos din. No? Sinimulan, sinimulan ko po ito uh, September 2020 at ngayon ay December 31 na 2021. So 15 months no? na, na ginawa itong walk through the Bible at uh, 15 months nang sumusubaybay <laughs> yung mga nakikinig tuwing Wednesday. And uh, mahaba siya kasi may mga time na hindi tayo nag, uh, nag-release. No? May mga Wednesday na may, may ginawa tayo. So anyway, nakumpleto naman natin. So ito ay patungkol sa 39 books ng Old Testament at 27 books ng New Testament. Inisa-isa po natin. Wala, Genesis ang Revelation. Pero siyempre meron dyan na kung baga maikli lang kasi pinagsama na natin. Kaya, pero uh, 52 episodes lahat ito. Ang, mula doon sa introduction no, hanggang doon sa Revelation. Hanggang ngayon, Revelation. No? Yung Revelation ay natin nga natin 7 of 7. Yan na yun. Ito yun episode tonight. 7 of 7. Excited na ako. Siyempre, review lang. Ito yung mga authors natin sa New Testament. At uh, sa Revelation ay si John na uh, sumulat. So alam naman natin yun uh, kung kay sumusubaybay. So, simulan na natin. So, konting review lang uh, matatagpuan natin. Sa Revelation, uh, sa chapter 1 nito, makikita niyo yung things which kumbaga uh, na nakita no at sa chapters 2 and 3 eh, things which are na nangyayari at uh, things which shall be hereafter chapter 4 hanggang 22 yan yung mahaba na pinag-uusapan natin uh, yung mga prophecies and everything mga revelations ng Panginoon kay John Matatagpo naman nyo sa chapter 4 hanggang 22. So, game na ba kayo? Sa gabi na to, sa huling yugto, huling episode no, sa part 7 of 7, ay pag-uusapan natin yung chapter 17 to 22. At uh, exacto, Happy New Year. No? At bukas, January 1, 2022, eh, sisimulan uli natin to sa introduction Nang walk through the Bible hanggang January 2, Genesis, January 3, uh, so on and so forth, Exodus, so on and so forth, na hanggang mapunta uli sa Revelation. So, let's start. Simulan po natin. Ano? 
uh, sa chapter 17, anong nangyari dito? Alam niyo sa chapter 17 at saka itong chapter 18 ng uh, Book of Revelation, para kasi itong interlude no, na describing describing the doom of Babylon. Ako, kung pamilyar kay sa Babylon, ito yung unang mananakop ng Israel. Malupit to. Eh, kung naalala nyo, si King Nebuchadnezzar, ano, pinasunog niya yung tatlong bata, si Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego. Pero ito ay uh, refleksyon. Ano? Kasi ang literal na Babylon, eh, nung sa Old Testament kasi, laging dinidenounce yan. No? Kung baga, uh, parang ginawang sinanimus ng mga prophets ang word na Babylon sa human pride and corruption. No, kumbaga, nako, pag merong ugali, yung kaibigan mo ng ma-pride or corrupt, kumbaga, ang tawag nila doon, nako, Babylonian to, parang gano'n. <laughs> parang ano, kumbaga, parang naka nakatag sa iyo, parang gano'n. So, um For the Apostle John at sa kanyang lahat ng mga mambabasa, no? kumbaga, in-explain niya na itong Babylon ay parang uh, decadent to, or kumbaga parang culture na nagdidecay from a Roman Empire. Parang ganon. Kumbaga, nire-represent niya. So imagine niyo yung lupit ng Babylon at saka ng Roman Empire. Yun yung yun yung explanation ni John, no. So no, kumbaga uh, dito ini parang kumbaga paano mas magandang sabihin to. Para kasi ano eh, yung Babylon in epitomize na yung uh, greed, dishonesty at saka yung evil, no? na evil ng puso ng tao na patuloy na nagre-reject sa Panginoon. According sa ano sa Revelation uh, chapter 17, ito tayo nagsisimula. Tingnan natin yung verse 6, no. Uh, kumbaga paano yung Babylon, no? Yung last evil system na to eh itatrato ang mga Kristiyano sa panahon ng last days. Basahin natin, sabi dito, Then I saw that woman was drunk with blood of the saints and with the blood of the witnesses to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. So si John to, ha? sabi niya, nakita ko yung babae. No? Eh, eh, revelation niya to na, na, na nire-reveal sa kanya ng Panginoon. Sabi niya, sinusulat niya, nakita ko yung babae, lasing na lasing sa dugo ng mga santo. Eh, teka, sino ba yung mga saints? Eh, di ba yun yung tinawag ng Panginoon? Hindi ito yung mga santo na tinatawag natin na para may umulan or santo para sa aso or santo para sa sabungan. Ito ay santo na tumanggap sa Panginoong si Kristo. Kapag ka ikaw kasi tumanggap sa Panginoon, tinanggap po siyang Lord and Savior, you're a saint. Kumbaga, witness ka sa Panginoon. Sabi niya, nagulat ako. Nagulat ako. Sabi niya ganun. Kumbaga, itong pangyayari na, na, na nakikita ko sa revelation ko, sabi ni John. Alam niyo, Itong chapter na to, itong 17, kumbaga also makes it clear na itong present and future evil system na namangyayari ay doomsday talaga. <laughs> Alam niyo, parang kalaban ni Superman. Kasi hindi lang doomsday para sa, sa mga Kristiyano, pero sa pananaw nila yun, ano? Actually, hindi naman talaga dahil alam naman natin kung sinong panalo. Pero ito talaga ay doomsday para doon sa tinatawag na Babylon. No? Yung fate of Babylon. Kasi basahin natin sa 17, to 14. Sabi dito, the ten, horns, the ten horns you saw are ten kings who have not yet received a kingdom. 
but they will receive authority as kings with the beast for one hour. Beasts have one purpose and they give their power and authority to the beast. This will make war against the lamb. Sinilam, si Jesus. So may sampung hari at saka yung beast. Iklala naman natin, sino yung beast. No. Sabi dito, bibigyan sila ng authority. No? These, have no, th- these have one purpose. And they give their power and authority to the beast. So itong mga hari na to, mga state leaders na to, ibibigay nila authority nila din sa beast. Kaya magkakaroon ng war against kay Jesus. The Lamb. But the Lamb will conquer them because He is Lord of Lords. Hello, King of Kings. Hello. No? And uh, those with Him are called chosen and faithful. So lahat ng naniniwala kay Kristo, ang tawag sa kanila, the chosen. Mga faithful. Ikaw yun, kapatid. Tayo yun. Diba? Tingnan natin. Ano yung mababasa nyo sa chapter 18? So, reminder lang po, pina-fast cut natin para magkaroon kayo ng overview. Para pag binasa nyo, alam mo na yung i-expectin mo. Okay? Hindi ko po maikukwento yung buong libro dahil napakahaba nun. No? Hindi ko pwedeng basahin yung Biblia para sa'yo. Kung gusto mo ng ganun, ay pwede ka namang mag-play sa YouTube na pakadaming audible Bible. But what I'm trying to do is to explain it to you in a simple ma, uh, in, in, in simple terms kumbaga na somehow sana maintindihan nating lahat kasi sa totoo lang hindi naman talaga ganoon uh, kadaling intindihin lahat ng bagay at minsan sa paulit-ulit at sa tulong ng banal na espiritu eh unti-unti nare-reveal sa ating kaisipan sa maliit nating kaisipan kumpara sa wisdom ng Panginoon Sa tulong niya, pwede tayong lumago. Okay, let's move on doon sa chapter 18. Okay, Pastor, ano ba nangyari sa chapter 18? mo naging exciting na yung ating kwento. Okay, sa so chapter 18 naman, dito describe yung mga fate of the last evil system na in more detail ng konti. No, matatagpuan niya yan. Baga, it appears no, doon sa... From chapter 18.4, yung the rewards of this system are tremendously enticing. So much even true believers are warned to come out of her. Ba, ano ibig sabihin? Basahin natin, no? then I heard another voice from heaven. Sabi ni John, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, or receive any of her plagues. Okay. Ito yung drunk woman na nakikita ni, ni, ni John. Okay? So sabi niya, umalis kay John, lumabas kay sa kanya. Okay. Pasimplihin natin. Sa mundo ng kasalanan ngayon, sinasabihan tayo ng Panginoon, huwag kayong sumali dyan. Mga tinawag ko kayo, mga mahal ko kayo. Kayo yung tumanggap sa akin, yung nagmamahal din sa akin. Yung faithful sa akin at faithful ako sa inyo. Huwag kayong sumama. Okay? Sa mga ganyang gawain, masasama, corruption, pagnanakaw, pagpatay, pangalungon niya. At kung ano-ano pa mga bagay na hindi kalugod-lugod no, sa harapan ng Diyos. This is a direct no, message to us na pag yun ang tanggapin yung flag, mga plagues na ibibigay ko. Okay? Do not share sa sins nila. No? Kung baga, come out. Dini kayo. Kung baga sa batang ganyan niya. Alinat pa, dini kayo. Huwag kayo dyan. No? Ganun lang kasimple. No? Kung baga, pinapakita ni John, sinasabi niya sa mga taong bumabasa ngayon ng Book of Revelation, huwag kayo magpapad sa kasalanan. In fact, madami na tatakot basahin ng Book of Revelation sa totoo lang. This book is an evangelistic book. And dito horror horror book. No, kumbaga, hindi to horrifying yung mga sinasabi pero if you will look 
into it de- in, 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 in a deeper manner, may kita mo, evangelistic to. Lagi sinasabi ng Panginoon, halika, halika, halika. Though not specifically no, describe, no, makikita natin sa, sa verse 18, at chapter 18, verse 8. No? Sabi to, for this reason, her plagues will come in just one day. Death and grief and famine. She will be burned up with fire because the Lord God who judges her is mighty. So yung judgment ng Panginoon, very swift. Kung baga, alam mo yun, astig. Eh, madaming nga interpretation. Some believe it may be, alam mo yun, instantaneous na explosion of a nuclear bomb. Diba? Or probably nililink ng iba sa isang economic destruction kagaya nung nangyari nung market crash nung 1929 kaya nagtaroon ng Great Depression. Or itong 2008, di ba? Yung mga, mga bahay binawi ng bangko sa mga tao. Pero alam niyo whatever it is, I'm sure it will be sudden at unexpected. Right? Tingnan natin sa chapter 19. Oo, oh, pastor, ano naman nangyari dyan sa chapter 19? Dito sa chapter 19, kung mapapansin nyo, doon sa last part na binanggit natin kanina, di ba? Inati natin yung three parts, yung, yung revelation. Sa last part, yung third part, yung things na makikita pa lang. Eh, sa mula sa chapter 4 to 18 yun, kumbaga, ito, they almost mga mga chapters na to exclusively dealt with the judgment na gagawin ng Panginoon sa earth. So, kumbaga, we have temporarily lost sight kung ano nangyayari na dun sa church na na-rapture dun sa chapter 4 na pinag-aralan natin dati. Alam nyo, while the Lord is judging the nations on earth, there will be two exciting events then na pwedeng mag-take place sa heaven. Pwede probably the same time. I don't know. Una, no? there will be the judgment seat of Christ. Okay, iba to dun sa white throne judgment. Explain natin. Okay, Pastor, ano ba yung judgment seat of Christ? Okay, yung judgment seat of Christ. No? Dito, bef- dito before, sa harapan nito, lahat ng Kristiyano ay kailangan tumayo. Mm-mm. No? This will be a time of rebuke, confession, and cleansing that should have been made while on earth. At uh, some Christians, no, tingin-tingin mo natin, chapter, sa so 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 verses 11 to 16, ano nakasulat dun? For no one can lay any foundation other than what has been laid down. Si Jesus yun. That foundation is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, each one's work will become obvious for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed by fire. The fire will test the quality of each one's work. If anyone's work he has built, survives, he will receive a reward. So, it test ng fire daw, yung work natin. If anyone's work is burned up, he will experience loss. But he himself will be saved. But only as through fire. Don't you, don't you yourselves know that you are God's temple and that the Spirit of God lives in you? Okay. Si Paul, prophetic na yung sinabi niya. Kung ano mangyayari dito. Na, Binanggit din niya dyan, di ba? So lahat kayo mga Kristiyano, dapat ang foundation niyo si Kristo. Okay? So hinalintulad niya sa mga materialis na kapag ka iyan, isinalang sa, sa, ano, sa apoy, pag yan nag-withstand, o oh, sige, may reward. Pag ka nasunog yan, ay yun lang. Di ba? Meron kang losses. Pero safe kayo. Dito, Uh, kumbaga, some Christians will be rewarded, some Christians will suffer loss. Uh, kumbaga, uh, 
after this judgment, no, yung bride, yung church tayo, eh, magiging ready na. No, magiging ready saan? Sa Revelations 19.7. Ang Revelations 19.7, it talks about His wife no, that is made ready. Ready para saan? Eh, kasi nga, ito exciting, may kasalan na mangyayari. Siya yung, siya yung groom, eh. tayo yung bride, tayo yung, tayo, ikakasal ang Panginoon sa atin. No, sabi dito, and he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. No, pag tinawag ka, ibig sabihin, part ka ng bride, ng church, ikakasal ka sa Panginoon. At sabi ni, sabi ni John, sinabi sa akin ng Panginoon, and he said it unto me, sabi ni, sabi ni John, these are the true sayings of God. Ito ang katotohanan, sabi niya ganun. Kumbaga, this brings us to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Merong supper, merong piging, merong party, merong dinner, date tayo kay Lord. Yun yung second event. Yung first event, judgment seat of Christ, no, habang uh, nag-rapture, habang, um, uh, habang uh, umbaga, may judgment ang Panginoon sa earth. At yung second event ay yung marriage supper of the lamb. Okay. Keep in mind no na kumbaga yung napag-aralan natin before no sa mga lessons natin na yung mga armies na naggather sa Holy Land ay upo sila sa, sa sa beast at saka sa armies nito. But nakakatawa. Apparently, kinalimutan mo ni nila yung mga animosity nila sa isa't isa at nag-unite sila to oppose Jesus Christ and his holy army. Kaya tong si the beast, hindi si Calvin Albuheba, kundi si the beast, the antichrist, no. The false prophet the ten kings or rulers kung sino man yung mga rulers by that time and all uh, and all who received the mark of the beast no yung mga tumanggap eh alam niyo ba isang araw will be defeated in this battle pero ano mangyayari dun sa the beast sa the false prophet at sa kanila mga followers no actually uh Ah, okay, I'm sorry. Ito yung, itong pinakita ko to. Balikan lang natin ng konti. Yung patungkol doon sa 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 last, sa, sa last supper sa Matthew 26:29. May binanggit na si Jesus eh, but I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this uh, fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you. No? I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. So it's a prophetic na sinasabi ni Jesus na someday magkikita tayo ulit doon sa kingdom ng tatay natin at doon natin iinumin itong fruit of the vine na to. no? So ibig sabihin, it talks about your marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, balik tayo. Kasi nakita ko yung ano. Balikan natin to. Ito the beast na to. No? Sino ba itong the beast na to? And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshipped his image. Okay, ulitin ko lang. The beast, antichrist, false prophet. Ten kings or rulers na binabanggit lahat sa revelations ni John. At lahat na nakareceive ng mark of the beast ay isang araw matatalo ng Panginoon. Okay? This part of the battle of uh, Armageddon eh, matatagpuan natin sa Revelation 16. No? Chapters 16 verses 16 to 21. Alam nyo, kumbaga... Uh, Kung gagawa ka ng checklist sa second coming, it talks about the defeat of the beast, 
in His army at irerescue ng Panginoon yung mga believers living at this time. Kaya sa Armageddon, Armageddon, no? na binanggit din natin last time, eh, the Lamb defeats the beast. No? Maga para sanay tayo, di ba? Sa National Geographic, lagi yung beast, no? yung uh, kumakain sa lamb. But this time, the lamb will defeat the beast. No? Mas magandang pelikula to sa totoo lang. <laughs> okay, chapter 20, ano nangyari? Ay, itong beast at ang false prophet ay natalo na. At uh, tinapon na sila doon sa hell. At uh, ngayon, dito sa chapter 20 verses 1 to 3, Si Satan eh kinas na nga doon sa bottomless pit. No? Pero hindi pa to ang final judgment niya. Sige, basahin natin. Uh, then I saw an angel I, uh, coming down from heaven holding the key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that ancient serpent who is the devil and Satan. Pansin nyo, ancient serpent, ibig sabihin, nandun na during the time of creation. Dahil ito yung serpent na nanloko kay, Eva, kay Adan at Eva. Eh. No? And bound him for a thousand years. So tinali ng Panginoon. He was chained by God for a thousand years. Millennium. He threw him into the abyss, closed it, and put a seal on it so that he would no longer deceive the nations. Until the thousand years were completed, after that, he must be released for a short time para makapanloko na naman. Okay. Ano yung Millennial Kingdom? Sa chapter, as a verses 46 ng chapter 20, no? uh, doon dinescribe yung tinatawag na millennium. Okay. Pamilyar tayo. No? In millennial Kingdom, hindi ito yung kaharian ng mga millennials. <laughs> Teka, bakit nga ba tinabang silang millennial? Eh kasi nga, di ba nagpalit ng millennium from 19th century, naging 20th century. So, alam yun naman, thousand years means millennium. So, kaya yung mga kabataan ngayon, ang tawag sa kanila ay millennials. Okay? So, dagdag kaalaman mula kay Kuya Kim. So, what does the word millennium mean? No? Kumbaga, uh, pag binasa mo yun chapter 24 to 6, no, mas maiintindihan mo ang ibig sabihin ng millennium. Sabi ito din, I saw thrones and people seated on them who were given authority to judge. I also saw the, the souls of those who had been behead, beheaded because of the testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and who had not accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed the holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them. But they will be priests of God and Christ and of Christ. And they will reign with Him for a thousand years. Yun, itong peace time to, masaya to, exciting tong millennium na to. Pero yun lang, at the end of the millennium, sa so verse 7, Satan will be released from a thousand years of torment mula doon sa bottomless pit. But he will not have changed at all. No, hindi siya nagbago. Yung pa rin, kuleching pa rin si Satan kasi he will immediately go about his old schemes no? sa pagdideceive na maraming tao. The final battle, eh, kumbaga, madidis, uh, kumbaga, makikita natin, no? uh, doon sa, na, na-mention na yung Gog and Magog. Pero, going back kay Satan, no, Uh, yung after ng 1,000 years i-release siya, huwag kayong matakot kasi talo na ito eh. Ah, alam niyo yun? Jesus, Jesus, 
si Jesus tinahapos siya na to. Okay? So, kumbaga, how, kahit gaano ka scary na pinoportray to ng Hollywood o ng any uh, movies or anong palabas, hindi nakakatakot si Satan. Ang katakutan nyo, yung wrath ng Panginoon dahil yung puso natin nag-hardened. No, dapat eh, magbalik loob tayo sa Diyos dahil mas nakakatakot yung pwede mangyari sa atin. Dahil totoo ang hell, alam niyo yun. At uh, mas nakakatakot yan kesa kay Satan. No? Kasi si Satan, magiging tropa mo yan doon sa baba dahil susunugin ang mga tao, ang mga kaluluwa na hindi tatanggap sa Panginoon. So, as basic as that. No? Kung baga, huwag natin kalimutan, mas nakakatakot yun kesa kay Satan. Si Satan, wala. Ano lang yan. Uh, walang power yan over kay God. Okay? So, kumbaga, mismatch ang laban. Kumbaga. Okay. So, parang uh, nag-basketball si Michael Jordan at saka one-year-old kid. Parang ganun. Anyway, uh, dito nga sa Millennium, ah, so, sorry, sa The Gog and Magog na mention sa chapter 20 verses 8 to 10. Uh, basahin natin. And, we, and we'll go out to deceive the nations at the four corners of the earth. Sino? Si Satan. Gog and Magog to gather them for battle. Okay. Itong Gog and Magog, sabi nila tao, sabi nila bansa. Let's interpret. No? Their number is like the sand of the sea. Oh, mukhang bansa. They came up across the breadth of the earth and surrounded the encampment of the saints, the beloved city. Then fire came down from heaven and consumed them. Ayun, tinapos din pala sila. The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Yung nabasa ko, sabi nila, China daw sa Russia. I don't know. No? Hindi ko alam. Nabasa ko lang naman yun. I'm just sharing it with you. No? Uh, ito daw ay uh, mag-aaklas laban sa Panginoon. Kasi eh, China and Russia, obviously, uh, are, are two both nations na no? walang Diyos. Pero it might not be true. Bagan. Don't take my word from, for it. Nabasa ko lang. Sinayar ko lang sa inyo. Anyway. Uh, asa na tayo? Okay. So... Revelations 20.10 Anong makikita natin dito? No? After ma-destroy yung followers ni Satan, no? Ano mangyayari sa devil? Hmm, magandang question yun. Nakasulat yun sa verse 10. Now, the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet are and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, magiging tropa mo dun si devil pag, pag hindi mo tinanggap ang Panginoon. Di ba? So, mahirap yun. Imagine mo, day and night forever and ever. Ibig sabihin, walang, walang tapos. Sabuti pa, pag namatay ka, tapos na. Hindi, ito, yung kamatayan mo, walang katapusan. So, hirap, overhirap, overhirap. Mahirap yun. <laughs> diba? So, ano yun? It, kung, kung baga, gamitan mo ng common sense, mag-invest ka papunta. Ano? Bili kang tiket papunta langit. Yan si Jesus. Libre pa. Kesa mag-enjoy ka ng konting panahon dito sa mundo and then forever and ever you'll be tormented. ba? Diba? Basic common sense. Hindi na kailangan na matalinhaga. Simple lang ang dapat natin piliin. ba? Diba? Now, baga, we come to the most awesome passage in the Bible. Yung Revelations 20, 11-15. Basahin natin. The Great White Throne Judgment. Okay, iba nga ito doon sa ano, uh, seat of Christ. No? Then, I saw great, uh, then I saw a great white throne and one seated on it. So, meron isang ma- ma- baga pet malu. No? Great. Baga mahiwaga. M- unexplainable. Na puting trono na kung saan merong nakaupo. Earth and heaven fled from His presence And no place was found for them. I also saw the dead, the great and the small, yung mga malalaking tao, malilit na tao, nakita niya daw, standing before the throne. And books were opened. 
another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by what was written in the books. Then the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and Hades or hell gave up the dead that were in them. Each, was one, each one was judged according to their works. Death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Oh. Kumbaga, yung word na translated na hell sa verse 13, a Hades. No? Ito yung place where lost people have gone through the centuries to wait, to await judgment. Tapos i-judge sila sa great white throne judgment. Kumbaga dito, yung Hades no, gives up its souls, the graves give, give up their bodies and they came together together in the last resurrection. So, bak- na- naglutangan na yung mga naunang namatay sa ating lahat. Naglabasa na sila lahat. Kung saan-saan sila galing. Finally, nagstand sila before God to receive their eternal destiny. Maring that time, patay na tayo, maring buhay tayo, hindi ko alam. In record books, binuksan, pagkatapos, every thought, every word, no na isip mo sinabi mo lahat ng ginawa mo no ay naging evidence against you or for you which God will pronounce his verdict na concerning sa degree para sa yung eternal punishment kabe no kumpaka we need to understand mga kapatid teka lang totoo yung hell there will be degrees of punishment in hell God will take into action the opportunities each person had to accept Christ. The amount of knowledge each had and even the environment in which each lived as well as the severity and frequency of each person's sin. Kumbaga, lahat yun babalansi ng Panginoon. I-judge niya ng tama. Kaya ako hindi ako natatakot doon para sa mga taong sabi natin, eh paano hindi nakakilala sa Panginoon? Technically, sabi ng Biblia, hindi siya tumanggap, hindi siya papasok sa langit. That's technical. Di ba? Pero ang Diyos, eh, mapagmahal na Diyos, hindi ko alam kung meron siyang sariling judgment niya. Di ba? Kasi nga naman, unfair, hindi siya nakilala, eh paano niya naman i-judge? I don't know. Pero... Dito, sigurado ako ang Diyos judge. Just. Di ba? Kung baga, uh, kukunin niya ang para sa kanya at itatapon niya para sa kanya. Ah, hindi para sa kanya. Okay. Paalala lang, totoo yung hell. Okay? <laughs> hindi sa pananakot. Pero yun yung katotohanan. Okay? Hindi ako nagsabi noon, Bible. Okay? Totoo yung hell. Kasi wala na yung preach about hell ngayon. Di ba? Uh, hindi para takutin yung tao, pero para ipakita yung katotohanan. Di ba? Para yung anak mo. Parang, alam mo yun, uh, pagka, pagka ba itinusok ko tong tinidor na to doon sa wall socket, magiging ano ako, superpower or pag kinagat ba ako ng gagamba, magiging Spider-Man ba ako. Diba? Anong sabihin mo sa anak mo? Pag kinagad ka ng kamal, malamang lagnatin ka. Mag- 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 mag-shock ka kasi may, baka may allergy ka. Alam mo, hospital ka. Pag sinaksak mo yan, tinidor na yan din sa wall socket, malamang ma-electricute ka. Malamang hospital din ang bagsak mo. Na parang killjoy naman. Diba? Hindi Spider-Man, hindi maging bionic man. No. Ganon din dito. Sinasabi ng Biblia, huwag mo itong gawin, punta ka sa hell. Ganun lang kasimple yun. Diba? So, we need to obey God and listen to Him. Right? Chapter 21. Ano nangyari? Ito, patungkol naman sa new heaven and new earth. Ayan, dito, alam niyo dito ako, excited eh. Sa lahat ng binasa ko. Simula na naging bago akong Kristiyano, many, two more decades ago. Ah, uh, 
dito ako pinaka-excited eh. Dito sa new creation. Sabi ni, ni John, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. No? So nakakita daw siya ng bagong heaven, bagong earth. Ano ay, ano ay itsura nito? Di ba? Ayun ang nangyari dun sa, ba- sa old heaven and old earth. No? And for sure, maganda tong new heaven and new earth. Kasi yung heaven ngayon, maganda na eh. Yung earth ngayon, maganda na eh. Siyempre, gagawa ng bago si Lord, mas maganda yan. Pero ano nangyari dun sa old? No? Sabi sa 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, By the same word, the present heavens and earth are stored up for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Uy, naku, matutupok pala, no? <laughs> Ibig sabihin, di ba, parang tuon mo yung buong buhay mo, invest pa more sa isang lugar na eventually mawawala naman. That will not last forever. Diba? I'm not saying na you stop investing or stop working. Please don't get me wrong. No, cool to yun. Pero what I'm saying is work as if you are needed to work for whatever your needs, no? for the supply of your needs, that the Lord bless you. Gather enough para ikaw mabuhay na maayos at may dangal. Pero yung magpakasasa ka na kunin mo lahat ng pwede mong kunin, pagkatapos iiwan mo lang, tapos yung pag-iiwanan mo, eventually, sabi dito, matutupok lang ng apoy. Eh di, nako, di sayang naman, di ba? Eh di, mag-invest ka na lang sa heaven. May bago ka pang bahay dun sa new heaven and new earth. Kaya alam mo, meron ako mga kilalang tao, matatalino. Marunong mag na uh, love offering sa Panginoon. Bakit? nag invest sila sa kingdom. Bakit? Eh kasi nga naman, para pagdating ng panahon, di ba? pagdating doon sa judgment throne, eh lalabas at lalabas yun. Makakalculate yun. <laughs> anyway, alam nyo, uh, tsaka doon sa 2 Peter 3.10, mamabasa yun, but the day the Lord will come like a thief. On that day the heavens will pass away with a loud noise the elements will burn and be dissolved and the earth and the works on it will be disclosed. So talagang sinabi na rin ni Peter, walang mangyayari. So huwag na kayong mag-invest dyan. So, mag-invest kayo sa bagong heaven at bagong earth. Ay nako, ano ba itsura ng New Jerusalem? Yan yung old Jerusalem. Ito yung present day Jerusalem. Pero ano yung, actually maganda na eh. Pero ano, ano yung, nako, mas maganda. Wala sa kalingingan sa New Jerusalem. Di ba? Kung baga, sabi doon, meron 12 gates. No? Makikita yun sa verses 9 to 21. No? Kung baga, dinetail yun yung New Jerusalem. May 12 gates, 12 angels, 12 foundation, 12 apostles. No? May mga debate na kung baga, these details and dimensions ay... Dapat daw to be taken literally. Sabi naman ng iba, hindi naman daw dapat. However, we must remember, it has not entered into man's mind the things God has prepared for those who love Him. Di ba? Remember 1 Corinthians 2.9. Hindi mo masusukat maisip yung pwedeng ibigay at gawin ng Panginoon sa iyo. Baga, si, eh, ano eh, kailangan ganun para maintindihan natin mga mortal eh. No, yung, yung, yung parang nakaredi para sa atin na ginawa ng Panginoon. The most important description, alam nyo, sa New Jerusalem na makikita natin sa Revelation 21.4. Sabi dito, There shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, wala nang iyakan, wala nang kamatayan, wala nang lungkot, neither shall there be any more pain na wala ng sakit if it is that kind of place it doesn't matter where it is or what material it is made it will be the most wonderful place the hand of God can create right? No, sabi niya he will wipe away every tear from their eyes death will be no more grief, crying and pain will be no more 
because the previous things have passed away. Yun, a new Jerusalem. No, umbaga, uh, umbaga, it's not about the literal details, it's about yung pwede mo makuha dun sa Jerusalem, New Jerusalem. Kasi, eh, di ba, si Kristo ang importante dun at saka yung benefit mo, no pain, no more, no more sorrow, no more grief. Wow, panalo. And last chapter, 22. Tapusin na natin to. Excited na ako. <laughs> okay, so first five verses na makikita niyo sa chapter 22 ay... Um, Baga, more details no about no sa buhay within pag nandun ka na sa New Jerusalem basahin natin then he showed me the river no pinakita ng Dios kay John no sa kanyang panaginip sa kanyang revelation the river of the water of life clear as crystal oh, imagine natin flowing from the throne of God and of the lamb down the middle of the city's main street Tingnan nga natin yung ano yung picture. Sorry. Asa na yung picture ng eto. Ayun, may river kita niya sa gitna. Oh, parang yan yung ano model lang, no. Ano pa sinabi? Uh, sabi down the middle of the city's main street. So sa middle lang street merong river. Okay. The tree of life was on each side of the river bearing 12 kinds of fruit. producing its fruit every month. Ooh. Pwede bang kainin yan? Hindi ko alam. The leaves of the tree are for healing the nations and there will no longer be any curse. Wow, panala to. Wala nang siraan, wala nang awayan, wala nang agawa ng West Philippine Sea. Okay, wala nang black versus white. <laughs> diba? Wala nang wala nang dilaw versus <laughs> at uh, dilawan at the tertads ba yan? at uh, wala ng republican at democrats wala nang ganun wala na away away the throne of god and of the lamb will be in the city and his servants will worship him they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads night will be no more oo sarap nito haba na fellowship ay kasi minsan bitin yung fellowship kasi may paparating na susunod sa yung gagamit ng chapel <laughs> People will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun because the Lord God will give them the light and they will reign forever and ever. Wow, pinaka-light mo na. Ano? Si Lord na. Panalo. Saya. Gustong-gusto kong makita ito someday. Oh, uh, actually, excited ako palagi pag weekends na kasi pupunta ng church. Ano yan? Eh, hindi ko pa compare yung magiging mararamdaman ko. pag nakapunta ako dito sa lugar na to. No. Kumbaga uh, yung first five verses na yun in explain no. Ano itsura na yung Jerusalem. Pero sa so verse 7 as the book comes to close no. Three times the Lord Jesus says, I come quickly. No, darating ako. Sabi niya, look I am coming soon. Darating ako, sabi niya. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. No? Babalik ang ating hari. Kumbaga, the words, I come quickly or I'm coming soon do not mean Jesus intended to come sa panahon ni John. But when these things begin to happen, sigurado lang isang bagay, wala nang delay. Babalik at babalik ang hari. Revelations 20, 20, 22 verses 18 to 19, dito tayo magtapos. Ano yung final warning na binigay no? ni John sa kanya mga mambabasa kagaya natin? I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, ayan, yung mga tinitwist nila yung word of God, pinapalitan nila para, alam yan, gamitin nila. God will take away his share of the tree of life and the holy city, which are written about in this book. Kaya wag po tayo magdagdag bawas 
sa salita ng Diyos. Kung ano yung nakasulat, yun ang sabihin. Masaktan ko masaktan, pagpalain kung pagpalain, bahala ang Holy Spirit sa inyo. Kaya do not kill the messenger. Kawawa naman yung mga pastor. Sinasabi lang nila yung katotohanan. Huwag naman kayong magtampo, umalis sa simbahan, isumpay sa pastor. Kawawa naman. Alam yun, eh. sinabi lang yung totoo na nabasa. Eh. Sinare lang sa inyo, tinuro sa inyo. Eh, yun yung panawagan nila. Eh. Kasi ba, kung baga, yun yung kanilang uh, pinapagawa ng Diyos, ginagawa lang nila yung trabaho nila, walang personalan. <laughs> okay. So, ayan, tapos na. Tapos na. Tapos na. Yes. Pero kapatid, no. Uh, paalala lang, kung baga, dami natin natutunan mula Genesis ang Revelation, di ba? 66 books 'yan, no. Suksanang isang suksanak ta imbitahin na manalangin na to ensure na magkita tayo doon sa langit. Simple lang na yung panalangin eh. Pwede ka ba sumunod sa akin? Let us pray. Bow your heads, close your eyes. Manalangin tayo. Panginoong Hesus Kristo, Lord Jesus. Ako po ay uh, humihingi ng tawad sa aking mga kasalanan. I repent of my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Ako po ay makasalanan. I am a sinner. But I believe that you died upon the cross for me. Ako po ay naniniwala na kayo po ay nagbuwis ng buhay para sa akin. That you shed your precious blood for the forgiveness of your sins. Inayaan niyo pong itagas o tumagas ang inyong banal na dugo para sa kabayaran ng aking mga kasalanan. I accept you now as my Savior, my Lord, my God, my friend. Tinatanggap ko kayo, Panginoon, bilang aking tagapagligtas, Panginoon, at aking kaibigan. Come into my heart and set me free from my sin, Lord. Pumasok po kayo sa aking puso at ako'y palayain sa aking mga kasalanan. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. Sa ngala ng Panginoong Yesu Kristo. Amen at Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you guys. Maraming salamat. Yes, you did it. Congratulations. Palakpakan. <laughs> Natapos mo ang uh, 52 episodes ng ating Walk Through the Bible. Malay mo, meron kang award. Hindi lang mula sa La Filnas, kung hindi, wala sa langit. God bless you. See you again. Visit us kapag may time ka. Bye!